Robert and Levada Proctor were last seen this past Thursday and their son, sons and their families along with several others are searching tonight for the couple and they're also asking for the help of you at home to keep an eye out for the couple and their car. When did she figure it out that she was totally lost? 7 a.m.? Do they end up in the water right here that is not frozen? And it's going to be right over straight behind you, straight off the ramp. Robert and Levita Proctor went to Grand Island in January. They apparently got lost, trying to get back home to Aurora. That was almost six weeks ago. They're driving a Chrysler Pacifica 2007 license plate 1030. He was a veteran for 21 years. He was a, a, a CB. He served in Korea and he served in Vietnam. And Levada and, and he were married at 25 and 27 years old. On the date of, that they went missing, uh, Robert was having some medical issues. He uh, had been admitted to the hospital at Veterans by his doctor and then was actually uh, put in the ambulance and brought to St. Francis Hospital in Great Isle, uh, Nebraska. Levada has issues with her eyesight at night. So those are the things that you know start to really make us think about what was going on. You know, we have to start building a profile. You know, where did they live? Well, they lived up in Aurora. Where were, you know, where did she pick him up? You know, she picked him up in Grand Isle at the hospital, but then where was she last seen? And so now we have the, you know, the flagpole incident where she backs into the flagpole. We have the, uh, you know, just down the road, with the, the school at the roundabout was the very last location. And so that gives us a new ground zero that here we are 37 minutes away from their home. And so I think, you know, to make the best use of our day, one is we're dealing with a new scenario for us. You know, we haven't gotten into locations to where Everything is now frozen. We have the 360 sonar that we can auger some holes, drop the 360 in there, but we also have a magnetometer as well. We have nothing in the way of a car. I think that traversing that on that side is too far and too shallow. Rocks and bottom. Robert and Levada Proctor were last seen this past Thursday and their son, sons and their families along with several others are searching tonight for the couple and they're also asking for the help of you at home to keep an eye out for the couple and their car. So let us know where you're planning on starting tomorrow and we'll see if we can't meet you there. Email from the office just came in, said, I heard that you're coming to Nebraska to search for the Proctor couple. Please, please, please check the Bosamon cabin next to the river. I sent Lacey a message about it. I hope you can help this family. But I don't, I don't see any marks like where someone came off the road. Yeah. And so where is she going to possibly go making this our, our new ground zero? And how are we going to start searching this? If he's driving, it's a, total, it's a game changer. It's a total game changer from the standpoint of speed, from everything. And she's saying that the 34, there's a pond on the side of the road with a six foot gap in the reeds. We're only 18 miles from there. You know, it's almost like I can't get there fast enough right now. Just that feeling that you have. You have a disturbance right there. That there's no reason ice would be broken like that at all. I think I have something. Yeah, I keep getting a shadow over here. 
we're just not convinced that we don't have a car over here. Right there. Potentially, we have something of interest to us. Oh, do I have a car right there? Now that we've done two days of this and I had last night to think about it and we were talking about it more is her last three sightings was on 6 and 34. It's the same highway. So she's seen at the one gas station, which is the pump and pantry. And then she's seen at the Senex and, and then they're seen at the Adams Central High School. But what we did yesterday is we did a lot of north and south as we come across is what if she took another right, took another right on 34 as she was heading west and she knew that she saw that she needed to head north towards 80 again. But so this is why we are currently in, Kear in Kearney right now, is that last night we took that last between Minden and Axtell, we made her right on 44 coming north, which is this highway right back here that just came across highway 80, I-80. So now my, the, my thought process is what if, before we make our way down to 34 and six today, what if this gas station right here, they kept stopping at gas stations. So what if they stopped at this gas station? It's a right. They asked for directions again. They, maybe nobody was there. I don't know if it was open or closed at you know, two, two, three in the morning at this point. And then she keeps making right. So what if she now made a right? She made a right. She sees the dead end sign here. And now she, does, she never backs up. She never turns around. She can't do a U-turn there. So she makes a left here to go find her way. This road right here, first street that runs along the north side of I-80, has a bunch of ponds. We're then going to jump down onto 34 and 6 because, you know, you were doing a lot of research last night more about dementia patients, and there's some that will drive 900 miles. Yeah, we've seen, a, there were about six or seven articles about families that were had lost loved ones that were lost for four to six weeks. Uh, some that were found in two, some were found in four, that they were 900 miles away, that they actually had cash in their in their car. And so they kept buying gas and they kept buying food, but they kept on driving, thinking they were going the right, the right direction, but they both were confused. And they were found in good health, but they were both confused. You know, I think one of the big things also why we're here at this location is that this road goes straight parallel to Interstate 80. And Victor and, and Lacey and the families think that they, she wouldn't get on 80 at two, three, four in the morning, that she would take a side road no matter what because of the fact that she wasn't comfortable in the dark on the highway and she was going 40 miles to 45 miles an hour and it was scary for her when trucks are going by her the whole time. So that's why we're looking at this as a possibility that she thought that this was a, a parallel road she could stay on all the way and this road dies, you know, it goes, it goes right into the water. But now here's the other thing that now starts coming into play. Let's say that they are this far west from their home, from Hastings, as well as Aurora. Now the further away they get, and Robert keeps, he's the one that keeps asking for, you know, how do you get to Aurora, how do you get to Aurora? You don't say, how do you get to Aurora, Nebraska? And the further you get from there, the closer we start getting on 34 and 6 to Denver and just on the south side of Denver is Aurora, Colorado. So what if now they're asking for directions, how do I get to Aurora? Phew, you just go west from here. 34 and six, just follow it right on in. Again, we can only speculate, is it triggering? I need to stay on 34 and six. That's where we're at. We're gonna go search this road and we'll bring you into the rest of the story as to where the family is going today as well.
think what I'm most interested in is that if you stay on this road and you avoid 80 there, it's a dead end road at the very end of a pond at a boat ramp. Yeah, the more we clear, the, the more we have the ability to actually get to where we're supposed to be. You know, it's always nice to be able to find them on day one or day two, but with the situation with dementia, they could just keep on driving, you know? When I was doing the math last night too, let's say that she filled up right before she picked up, in fact, she filled up around 3 p.m. Yes. And if you calculate a vehicle running for eight hours, if it's just idling, it's gonna burn roughly, you know, four tenths to half a gallon per hour. The tank itself in a Chrysler Pacifica is a 23 gallon tank. So in eight hours, you're going to burn off four gallons if they're stopping, idling, sitting, staying warm because it was in the freezing that night. So you lose four gallons, you're down to 17 gallons. From there, you have, she's gonna be driving roughly 20 miles per hour is what she's going to be doing. And so you figure the eight hours that she's driving around, we're burning off another, you know, 10 gallons or so. So we're down to 13 gallons left and it gets highway of, 20 or so, it gets city driving at 15 miles per gallon, so average that out at 17. She still has over 200 miles of fuel available to her. And that's that's under the assumption she, she doesn't have, she, she has cash in the pocket, or she might even, we, we haven't seen any credit card statements or anything like that, but I, you know, if she has cash in her pocketbook and he has cash, then they could keep on going further. But, you know, I think knowing that it's 300 miles approximately from Hastings directly to Aurora, Colorado, there's a p possibility that they could definitely make it either close to there or, you know, somewhere in the vicinity if they actually just kept going straight on 34. Oh, look at this right here. That's a drop off. Yeah, I think we need to, uh, I mean, I don't see anything at first glance, but let's walk that. And what we're looking for is with the ground being soft, during the winter time here. I mean, it's winter time, but it's soft and moist. So we're looking for any indentation of vehicle marks. The other thing we're looking for is because it's winter time, everything is dead. If a vehicle comes across, it's not going to just lay these down, but it's going to snap them as well. And once they snap, they're not coming back to life. If it was springtime, over a six week period, absolutely they could pop back up. So that's what we're looking for. deeper right there. Ah, oh. oh, look at this. And it goes deep right away. Do you have and tire it, tracks? Huh? Do you have tire tracks? Well, we have, we have tire tracks here. We do have, you know, we do have lines. See right here, this indention here. Right. This indention goes that way. Yeah, but does it stop right here or does it go? Now, here's the other thing too. It's all drainage here, so it's gonna get washed over the, uh, with the ice and the snow and everything and then melt down and that's what that line is. Well, and even last night we had heavy rain, so yeah. I mean, it would clear. Clear any, but you really- Because, because this is a harder pack than that softer stuff if it was off of the road up there. But it goes right directly into depths. Well, I agree that we need to uh, check this one it does drop off to, I'm gonna say, at least 12 feet. Yeah, and we'll look at that bank on that other side. So it's probably it. the height of that could probably get to 16, 18 feet. That road also goes, uh, no, you have too many reeds on that side, so you're not getting to the water there. All right, let me pull the trailer in here. Let's uh, clear it. See if we can find a Chrysler Pacific in here. Yeah, that is eight feet deep right there. Nine feet. If 
this is your first time with us and you've not seen the way that we actually use these uh, sonar systems, I'm going to give you a quick little uh, overview as to our sonar and the way that we use it. The first one that I, is the number one that I use in order to start honing in what we need to find is going to be this bottom one right here on the hummingbird is our side scan. I'm currently shooting 75 feet to the left, 75 feet to the right. Anything that you see where the boat icon is at and is black water column is the water depth, which correlates with the upper left where it says depth to kind of give you an idea of that grid of 1836.54. That black there is like we're at 12 feet right now. You see how it widened just a little bit. The upper one is the down imaging. I use that one kind of in conjunction with the hummingbird is that that will show me my depth, which will also give me my height. If I get over to the top of an object, it will tell me how tall it is. Hummingbird's more of a picture in time, so I can scroll back and I say, can say, all right, ah, uh, there was a target here. I can zoom in on the target and see what it was and what I may have missed. Whereas the live scope is happening in real time. So if a fish swims by, I can see it in real time. However, I don't have the ability to go back and review it in real time as I do on the uh, hummingbird with a picture in time. So right now we've covered pretty much all the lake. We'll uh, do where this uh, truck is at over here on the right hand side, the white truck. We'll circle around that side just in case a vehicle may have come off over there as well. You have a set of tracks that come onto here, but then it goes up there, gets stuck there, backs up here, doesn't go in the water there. So that's not their tracks. So, and at the same time, just because it's so far off of a uh, paved road, I wouldn't put them over here for now. It's one of these areas where we'll keep it in mind, but it just doesn't it just doesn't like jump out give me your opinion on this bill uh, as I was looking so we came all the way across on first street here from town so here was Kearney back here we covered all these we ended up at the dead end right here on the south side of it there's also another first street and if you look on the actual aerial, there's one pond right here. I don't think you're getting into it. I think it's going to be difficult like this, but I just want to drive over there and put eyes on it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think that they're going to, if they get to 80, I think they're going to cross over the top of it because they know they have to get over the top of it before they stop. But when you're on First Street here on that first road that we started on, you have, if you make a right right there, that first street stays, so you actually have two first streets. I saw that, but it, but it, it goes under back under Interstate 80. Yeah, but you know she's not. She's looking for a place to turn around now again. If she does that, like oh, we made another wrong turn. I mean, it's a right-hand turn. It's plausible, you know. So plausible. See, I'm already rolling this one out. She went over 80. That would have been over 80, and now you're on a dirt road. So we need to take first back over to 44 south, and then 34. said we're coming back down to 34.6 and I think you know after we slept on it and we've been here for two days we don't believe that she got off of 34 and 6 and I think that we're going to run this for the next 120 miles in my opinion and we're going to check every body of water for the next 120 miles.
no water in it. Yeah, so you can see all the way down. The, the family texted me and they are actually uh, are driving directly to Lexington and then they're coming down 23 uh, all the way down into Holdridge and then right directly down to Lake Alma to clear that whole section uh, to make sure that, you know, and they're going to call us or text us and tell us if there's any location that they have a concern of. set of signs. All right, Veda, just go this way. Just another 20 minutes, just another 20 minutes. We'll be back in Aurora. You know, Aurora's up here. They are so far from home at this point. They've cleared Johnson Lake and they're now looking at El Elwood Lake right now. Okay. Um, nothing concerning that we've seen so far. So I just gave them an update that said that uh, any bodies of water that concern you, we should look at. We are 30 miles out of McCook. We looked at two ponds in Holdridge, two swales in the next town, two overpass creeks. Nothing showing accidents in area or depth to hide so far. What else can we do to put ourselves in the mindset of them and where they're going to end up now? Well, I mean, well, we're three days into this. We've taken what's been most logical next. We, we finished this route over to Cook. We've still got to have a few more hours after that today. And then, Where and then we, we, we can we drop down from Hastings down because we cleared up this way. Yeah. If we drop down from Hastings and, and do that square, and then we finish, then we can actually go back. And the, and the normal you know, concept that's always been there is five miles from home. Or do we do that first thing tomorrow? Yeah, home think, first. I think we do home first. Uh, yeah, I think we do home first. Just in case they just made it so close to home that that's when it, it happened. Right. You know, they got close to home and got complacent in case she finally figured it out or early morning she took off and that, that's when the medical emergency occurred because after being out on the road for 14 hours in the heat, cigarettes in the car, all the stuff going on, that she finally at seven o'clock in the morning driving home and that's when it happened or six o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's not very far from Grand Island there. So we've only gone that distance yeah, I think we're like 35 miles or so from McCook now. 11.37, you want to stop and see if these guys have a camera? I'm looking for those uh, grandparents from 60 days or from six weeks ago. And so I just want to see if they can, because we believe that they were getting directions to go to Aurora, not Aurora, Nebraska, Aurora, Colorado. And we're almost halfway now. And this is the biggest truck stop or station between here and Hastings. 
maybe they, and they were stopping at gas stations, you know, and I don't know if you have other locations that you're in connection with, anything that they see on 34, that's what we're looking for. We're looking to see if, if, if they got in here and then someone said, hey, take 89 North, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or 83 North, this, that you gotta get back to the highway, you know, and because they never showed up and they've been gone for six weeks. Their film goes as far back as they want. Okay. Uh, they are currently going through all the film in there. We went from three o'clock in the morning till six. Okay. They're gonna go further okay. and he's gonna look at every camera. Um, it lights at seven o'clock. If she took a her time to get here, this is the one spot that she could get to that it's not open from 12 till five, okay. but all the employees start coming in. And if we're in the same pattern, this is one of the spots that she would stop. Okay. So they're gonna do go through the film and they've got my number to call me. Okay. Okay. And, and in the meantime, are, they, are they able to see out to the highway as well? No, they're only able to see the front parking lot and then the back parking lot and then the side handicap area. Okay. So, so, so they would have had to pull into the parking lot? They have to pull in the parking lot no matter what, but it, he was pulling right into the front doors. Right. So I'm sure that that's what the case is. This is the only stop stop between, like you have the Senex of the last town or two towns before. Yeah. You have this spot and then you have McCook. So they're, if they're going to keep Going, stopping, stopping and going, how do I get to Aurora? It's that way. Right. Or additional Cokes or and, and, breaks or whatever. Yeah, and, and these guys are going to say Aurora that way. Right. Truckers Is that what she said? No, he just said, he said, where are they from again? I went, Aurora. He goes, Colorado? Right. See, that's how close we are to Colorado now. Yeah. Okay. You know, it, it, more recognizable. You can't even, you know, it, automatically when you put in your phone, Aurora. Oh, in, that ha yeah, that happened to me when I started right to Colorado. In this case. And you were like, zoom right in. Yep. Okay, well, let's uh, finish you know, the last 30, 35 miles down to McCook, and then we'll head north from there. The plan is to actually do each one of the uh, blacktop roads and finish our grid down from Interstate 80 south to uh, Route 34 and Route 23, just in case they went north anywhere along the road after here. And then the, the next piece of it is that our, we have to clear down below Hastings and then we have to clear Aurora itself, this line, this section here. As if they, they got, they finally figured it out and got back closer. But, which doesn't seem plausible that, that it, with the fact that they've been driving for eight hours. Unle unless they waited till light at one point and then started driving home. But where did they stop, if that's the case? And when did she figure it out that she was totally lost? 7 a.m.? I just don't, if the last sighting of her was at that, at the location where they had a bathroom break and, and two Cokes, and no other person has talked to them since, something happened to be in the next hour. You know, I, I just don't think, see them driving for more than an hour before asking directions again. Yeah. And then if you take, based on an hour and her speed of travel at, let's say, 20 miles an hour, we're really looking at a 20 mile radius. When does he finally take the right hand turn? Or she, take the right hand turn? We are so far away. but you definitely see uh, something destroyed. Thanks, Tom. So that's the truck stop that we were at. He said uh, he checked all the way till 8.45 in the morning and he didn't see anything with a, a, a elderly couple or Chrysler Pacifica that entered the building or came through the front door at that time after the doors were open at 5 a.m. Okay, so our game plan from here then, do we want to find the next road that goes across the plat south of 80. Do 
did we pull over for a restroom stop by any chance? I don't know. And if we did, do they end up in the water right here that is not frozen? See this? Seven feet. Now well, let's run it. Big tree right there. Yeah. Got something right there. It's a pile of sticks. Yeah, tree. Tree of some sort there. Give me interest in something coming up. Uh, 30 more feet or so. Let's see if I have any height to it. So usually what I'll do is I'll do those two passes out from the out from the ramp and then back into the ramp. And then I normally like to do like a 35 out from shore. Okay. And then I'll run just a quick little pass through there and then one more further out. There's some rocks on live, a bunch of them, at the end of the boat ramp. And it's gonna be right over, straight behind you, straight off the ramp. And there it is on the left, right about the 36 mark. Double check that. See that? How light that is? I want to come in right over that and see what I can pick up on life scope for that one. Which is almost right in line with the boat ramp. Yeah, so tree, tree, and tree. That is all we have. All right, I'm, I'm confident on this one. So we did uh, the 34 loop um, from Hold Holdridge all the way down till we got to McCook. Yeah. Um, we went to the gas station from McCook and asked them if they had any... Uh, uh, Bentley. Sorry, Bentley at Bentley. We actually uh, met with the gas station attendant and asked them if they would uh, allow us to look at video. And they gave us access to video from three o'clock in the morning till 8.30. And okay. we went through that. We didn't see him in there. I didn't see, I saw cars coming in. He actually went through it again after I left and said, call us back at around uh, one. Said, I didn't see anything all the way until 8.30 of them coming into the gas station and or being there. So that's a Bentley. Okay. And it's the one large gas station. You can go through, you know, the Rapaho and, and Holbrook and then into Bentley, Cambridge and then into Bentley. It's the one major gas station, really nice with the truck stop and RV gas. Okay. So we we went in there and, and, and spent some time with them and, and they told us that they, there was no They had a them. good view of the road? Not of the road, of the actual parking lot itself. Okay. okay. And so we then went from McCook up and came back around, checked those ponds again and then came back down through each one of these runs, looking over the river, looking at the Platte River, and looking at every body of water that was on the side of the road. Um, was it Elwood we stopped at? Is that where the bank was? Yeah. And yeah. they had a camera on that. Was it Highway 6, I believe? Yes. Yeah. That's the uh, Zion Bank, or Zion First, or whatever? Um, the red one? It was red, I forget the name of it. It was but right on the corner. It was right on the corner and they had cameras and they let us look at footage and they continued to look as after, after we, left, we left and yeah. she did call me and say that she never saw them drive by. Yeah, so right so right now, you know, I mean we slept on this last night, you know, and it was the what if thirty four and four, or six was just stuck in her head. Yeah. 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 Um, but now after driving it, it's like there's no way they're gonna spend that much time just driving in right. one direction because they've been doing this yeah. Yeah. you know for eight hours now. So then that brings us to, you know, while we're here and we're making our way back east, 
you know, we're currently right here at this location. We just have this one more right here that's going to drop into folk, folk or funk. Uh -huh. um, so we want to double check this one as the last possible blacktop that also crosses over the Platte, Platte River. River. Okay. From there, you know, as you can see, I mean, we're getting to the, you know, the evening, the sun's getting ready to set. The thought process is clearing the next section, in essence, if I look at it this way, this outside ring back to Aurora, back to their house, this whole piece next. Everything that's on the down, all the way around the outside ring, because that brings us down almost to Kansas. In essence. Yeah. So, yep. but I want to clear everything because I don't think they went too far before they turn back around again, but I want to make sure that we don't have any body of water in that outside, you know. The only thing we was wondering about, see where this wise and you got six, see all these bodies of water? Mm -hmm. This is a river that runs along this highway. Uh, the Republic is actually uh, empty, yeah. empty right now. Oh. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's dry. It okay, is. it is. Yeah, okay, so that's what we wanted because there's a lot of bodies of water and we thought, well, if mom veed here, you got 34 and 6. Did she stay on 6 or did she go this way at 34 down through this way or something? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, a lot it, of water. It's very it, possible that she went, I mean, it, it's 300 miles to Aurora. Yeah. So could she get there? It's possible. It, does she have cash in her pocketbook? Maybe. She's usually got cash with her. Yeah, so. She always has cash. With so her. She, if she's got cash with her, she could refill up and, exactly. and get to Aurora, Colorado. And yep. not know yeah. that she's getting to Aurora. Exactly, Nebraska. that's yeah. what we thought too. Because once you get so far and you start asking about Aurora, they're thinking Colorado. Same thing. Yeah. We ran into the same and thing. Every time yeah. you type into into Google Aurora, it yep. automatically brings you to Colorado and yep. it says six, sixty four. Yep. So yep. you don't if you don't look at it. And she doesn't have a phone, but yeah. other people are going to Aurora because Dad's going to Aurora. Yeah. He's not seeing yeah. Aurora, Nebraska. Yeah. So yeah. how do I get Aurora. to Aurora? Yeah. Yep. And I'm on the road that goes to Aurora. Yeah. 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 So we were looking we're at that. We're thinking the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, you know, we got to get to the point where I want to clear this first. I, I really it. believe we need to clear the full semi, you know, full circle yeah. around back to, to, to the house both ways, just in case they went around because we've cleared everything in the, in that area, in, in the center, in, in of the area. pink area here, uh -huh. cool. which is the, the center of like the, the epicenter of everything. So we've cleared all that and we've cleared any path that she could get from 34 or 23 up. So now the last piece of it is clearing that remaining balance of the epicenter of where yeah. she could have could have actually maybe gotten back. Yeah. If she figured off. it out. Because there's a road too that like says Carney and that's on that highway six. And we're thinking, well, did she see that Carney exit? And went the back sign towards was Kearney. tiny though. Yeah. yeah. The sign was tiny. And, Mom, but, and, and, that, and that's how we ended up in Kearney last night is because of that sign. You're talking about the one before you get to Axel. Yep, yep. Yep, after Minden between. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then that's why we cleared all the water, the potential ones, up here as soon as you cross over 80 and along for yeah, Street. Yeah, because I went through the whole ridge here a couple weekends ago like he did and all the way down to Tumult, Kansas. But no one's went <laughs> really from Holdridge that way. Yeah. And that's the only thing we could figure. But like what you, said, you guys said here, yeah, that's we, makes we, sense. We, we had to clear the center first yep. and back to home. And we haven't even gotten back to Aurora. Just in case she, mm -hmm. just in case she got got to that, that was her last lo like known location. Yeah, past yep. the Adams School. Yeah, just in case she actually took a, a left and then a right and then came back this way, and and actually got back to the road. You know, yeah. getting back to 14, which goes right into Aurora. And she knows 14 too. That that's gonna come up in her head. Okay. 34 and 14 will pop up in her head. Okay. Yeah, and and from the what gas about station? 74. 74, I doubt, but 34 and 14, she knows those roads. They're from, she's from, you know, they're familiar roads. Yeah. yeah. Those numbers are. Okay. Yeah, because 74, just in case she doesn't see it, if she actually turns and gets back at Minden, at Minden, she comes back on 74, she gets back to 74. Unless she looked at 74 and thought it was 14. Or 34. Or 34, and then comes back to 14. So the 74 cuts it all the way across, comes up, goes to 14 the back so way. So 34, 6, 4, and 14. Mm -hmm. okay. So that, I think that's our focus for tomorrow. Right on. And that way we can clear that 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 last that piece area. of it, and then we're gonna have to figure out you know, how much further we go from the standpoint of up in here um, to to I like guess Buffalo County and Dawson County, just in case she ever got back to yeah. State 80. Yeah. But we want to clear the main focus first. Now that we we know that that these bodies of water can't hold a vehicle. 
you know, other than... One thing yeah. I do know is the police department let me know that there's a lot of license plate readers in Kearney. It's a college town, and for a long time, they were the number one party college in the United States. So there's a lot of uh, drinking and going on there. Okay. And, you can't spell drunk without UNK. That was like their that, theme, that was, their, yeah. their motto. But, but does that mean that if she's not, if she's doing the speed limit, that she's not going to get picked up by anything? Well, I'm saying if, if she's doing the speed limit, no matter what, if it comes out 1030, if it's got like okay. 2, 8, 10, 30, 5, 6, it's going to pull that 1030 out and it, it alerts them. Anytime it sees a 1030 in a license plate consistently, it will pull it up. Okay. In Kansas, they've got them on their interstates and highways. But we're, we're they've a long had way from like, an interstate. Or, yeah. yeah. You know. But see, Nebraska but don't not, have them yeah. in, on highways and interstates. They're Nebraska only has them in towns. When normally what it is, it's your, it's your uh, tow companies that are feeding back into like a mainframe is what's happening. Because then they can go back in and find out if somebody skips out on their payment if they need to go repo. Well, see, is what they're doing with these, these things in Kearney is they're solving crimes. Because right. people break into a building at 3 a.m. <laughs> And five minutes before that, they saw them at five minutes till three past there. Yep. And then they know that they were there from three to 3.15. And then at 3.20, they're passing that that license Damn. plate reader again. And they're, they're going and saying, hey, you're the only one that went past this establishment. And it's five minutes up the road. And 25 minutes later, you came back. And of course, they're not letting them, but they're solving 75% of their crimes in Kearney with the license plate readers. Wow, that's really good. Yes, yeah. it is. And that's what the Aurora Police Department told me. So I think one of the things that, that I, I saw when we were driving is that the, one of the more dangerous areas, meaning that they get into, is getting into that, that uh, reservation. Yeah. Only be, because then you're in deep land of nothing. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's hills and, and crevices yep. and big ravines. Yeah. So you know if they went in up 18 or into that region there in 18, then by accident by like coming through whole you know Holbrook and then coming up. Yep. And getting into 18 and just into Stockville, you know that's yeah. when you start getting into a little bit more of a, a you know. Yeah, it does get pretty. And, and yeah, yeah, we we stopped off up. Uh, a lot of there are beams. a lot of water moccasins in our. Good to know now. Yeah, there and, is. and there's a lot of rattlesnakes. <laughs> good to know, also. Right? When you get into get the, out that to, way, yeah, right. you get out that way. You'll, you'll go down by the water, and there'll be rattlesnakes living right on the bank. Good to know, since he was in a hole today a couple yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. Well, usually it's when it's warmer out, but yeah, yeah, yeah they're they're probably not out right no. now, but. It, it gets sunny, they'll come out in the sun. Okay. So yeah, so I think the plan then is that, like I said, we're going to finish heading just to the east, take that other one down, and then we'll probably uh, hunker down in Hastings for the night. Uh -huh. And then let's just, in the morning, we'll have a game plan as to the locations. We'll yep, send us, to send us a map and we'll okay. see you somewhere along the way. Give us a path and you guys take one and Perfect. we'll be on it. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank yeah. you guys. Nice I appreciate you. it. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Not only do I appreciate you guys being here with me today, but I also appreciate Bill. I also appreciate Cade behind the camera as we have put in a lot of miles. The only thing that we ask of you right now, please simply subscribe, which is free, and turn on that bell notification. That way you get a notice of the next video, which we will also link down below of day four for our search. And with any luck, fingers crossed, tomorrow will be the day that we bring Leveda and Robert home. tire marks all the way through. 
Does that look like one and two? Yes. Yep. 